Hello and welcome to Linux Server Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from SoundTraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington based provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. This time we're doing configuring Windows Linux file sharing with Samba. It's based on Chapter 10 in my book, The Accidental Administrator Linux Server Step by Step Configuration Guide. The book is available through Amazon and other channels if you'd like to follow along, but it is certainly not required for the video. The Linux distro that I'm going to use is CentOS version 5.8 and the Samba version is 3. The things that I'm going to show you are uh, pretty universal so should work with pretty much any version of Linux or any version of Samba. You may have to change some things such as file locations but uh, certainly most of them should work uh, as long as you bear them in mind that some of the file locations may be slightly different. What can you do with Samba? Well, the main thing that most people seem to use it for is for sharing files and printers with Microsoft clients from a Linux server. As you can see in the diagram, there's a Linux server running Samba with a printer attached to it, and it's configured for file and printer sharing. And then you have Windows clients, maybe Windows 7 or XP or even older Windows clients, connecting and accessing file shares in the printer. You can also use it for authentication to set it up as a Windows domain controller, although I don't see that done nearly as much as the file sharing. In order to configure Samba, there's two files that you need to know about, one which you edit directly and one which you edit indirectly. You edit directly the smb.cont file, which is the configuration file. It's typically located in slash etsy slash samba slash smb.conf. The file that you edit indirectly with the smb password command is named smb password, and it is the file that synchronizes Samba passwords with Linux passwords. Let's take a look at the smb.cont file. This again is the main configuration file that you're going to be working with. And depending on your version of Linux, perhaps there's some includes, but the, the things that I'm going to show you are, are all things that are part of the smb.cont file, either directly or through include statements. There are two parts to it, the global options and then the share definitions. Let's first of all take a look at the global options. This is where you can set things like network options. That's where you set the work group name, server name, interfaces, um, allowed uh, subnets. Logging options is where you configure the log location and the maximum log size. Standalone server options is security. What type of authentication are you going to implement? Domain members option specifies the back end where user information is stored. And the domain controllers options is the actual back end where that user information is stored. Browser control options is uh, where you manage your network browser settings. This is not your web browser. This is network browsers, so you can see shares on the network. Uh, name resolution controls how Samba manages net BIOS names. And printing options uh, does pretty much what the name implies, controls whether the list of printers is loaded automatically and, and how Windows clients handle drivers. And then finally, the file system options uh, are available for you to use if you're working with a file system that supports extended attributes. Now, frankly, most of the things that you're going to configure, you don't need to configure. You can just go with the default settings. What we're going to work on is the network options and then the share definitions. And let's take a look at the share definitions. This is at the bottom of smb.conf. And this is where you have default shares that are configured. The default shares are your home directories. That's for your users' home directories and printers, which is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, then net logon, which is used for domain logons. Profiles, if you're implementing uh, specific roving profile uh, shares. And then public, which sets up a read-only publicly accessible directory. Again, you probably will only use homes and printers, uh, and you may configure a, a dedicated uh, SMB directory as well, which I'm going to do in the demo. The steps to configure Samba, it's really pretty straightforward. You modify slash etsy slash samba slash smb.conf. You restart SMB and you create the SMB users. And if you do it all correctly, then your Windows clients will be able to access the shares. Here are the prerequisites. In order to follow along exactly the way I'm doing things, you'll need a computer running Linux. The one I'm using, again, is CentOS version 5.8. must have Samba installed. If you don't, then you can use yum install Samba to do that. And a Linux user named user01 with a password of p at ss1234. You'll also need a computer running Windows. And the one I'm going to use is Windows 7. I'm running it in a virtual machine, but doesn't matter whether it's a VM or a physical box. And you'll need a Windows user, also named user01 with a password of p at ss1234. 
Here's the disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. No guarantees whatsoever. Please don't attempt these procedures on a production server without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. That's just generally good practice. And performing these procedures, even correctly, may open up your server to possible attacks. So make sure you have current backups. Take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. So let's go ahead and configure Samba. Now you'll notice with the pound sign that indicates that I'm already logged on as root. Um, and let's make things simple by navigating to the Samba directory under Etsy. So we'll cd to slash Etsy slash Samba. And then let's do an ls command. And there you can see the smb.conf file, which is the main configuration file that we're going to be working with. Now, before we modify it, what do we always want to do? We want to make a backup. So let's go ahead and make a backup of that. So we'll do cpsmb.conf and we'll save it as smb.conf.back or whatever you want to call it. Now let's go ahead and open it up. So we'll do a vi. You can use whatever text editor you like. I personally prefer vi, but you know, that's a matter of personal preference. And let's go ahead and open up smb.conf and we'll navigate down to the global settings. So now we're in global settings and we're going to modify the workgroup name and the server string. So uh, we'll go and do a CW to change word and we're going to change this to sound training. The server string we could actually leave it as is if we wanted to but let's go ahead and just put in the name of the server. So we'll do inst-centos and delete the rest of the line. So the dollar sign to delete the rest of the line. And now we could leave this alone, but this is where you can specify by subnet the hosts that are allowed to connect to the Samba server. And if you don't specify any particular subnet, then it's going to let everybody in. And maybe that's okay. That always makes me a little nervous. So I like to be particular. So I'm going to go in and specify an explicit subnet that's allowed to connect to the Samba server. So before I can do that, I need to remove the uh, comment at the very beginning, the semicolon. So we'll go ahead and just navigate over there and touch X to remove it. And now let's go over and set our subnet. Our subnet is 192.168.235. So I'll go ahead and add that in and then just delete the rest. I need to leave a trailing period there in order to make that work. So now I've got that done. And let's do a colon W to write it. We'll go ahead and leave the uh, file open. And let's go to the very bottom and take a look at the share definitions. So I'm going to touch Shift G to go to the very bottom. And here are the share definitions that I mentioned earlier. Let's add one more. Now I've already created a directory in the root of the file system called SMB demo. That's just purely for the purpose of demonstrating this. But let's go ahead and, and set it up as well. So I'm going to touch a lowercase o to open another line and switch VI to insert mode. And we're going to create that share definition. So I'll use the open square bracket and SMB demo. I can call it whatever I want and then close square bracket. And now we'll put in a comment. Don't have to do this, but you know, why not? So Samba demo directory. It's always a good idea to comment so later on you know what you were doing <laughs> when you look at it a year from now. Then path equals. Notice that I'm leaving spaces between the path statement, the equal sign, and then the actual uh, directory. So and we'll put an SMB demo because that's the name of the directory that I created. And public equals yes, it is available for you and all of your friends. Writable. This is an interesting one. I'm going to make it writable. But you, you have to realize that, that Linux permissions will override this. So they, they need to be synced. If you want this to be writable, then you need to go in and modify, use the chmod command to make sure that it's uh, writable by whomever you specify. And now we'll touch escape, colon, WQ, and we're finished. Now, except for one thing, we haven't configured any Samba users. And so in order to configure Samba users, you have to make sure that your Samba users and your Linux users are the same. 
So I, I happen to know that on this particular Linux box, I have a user named user01. So let's add that Samba user. So I'm going to use the SMB password command, SMB PASSWD minus A to add the user, and we'll call him user1. Put in the password. This needs to be synchronized with what you're using on your Windows boxes. Well, it doesn't actually have to, but it makes things a lot simpler if it is. So now we've got that user added. Let's take a look at them. We can use the command pdb edit minus l to show our Samba users. And there's user 1 that we've now added in. Let's also check the configuration of the smb.conf file with the command test parm. And here it shows what we've got configured. And it says, OK, everything seems to be fine. And if I want to take a look at my uh, service definitions, then I can do just hit the enter command, and there it's it really it's showing me what I've got set up. Everything appears to look fine. So let's go ahead and restart Samba. So we'll service SMB restart, and it goes to the restart process. Now let's switch over and take a look at our Windows 7 machine and see if we can actually connect to the share. Okay, so we're on Windows 7, and let's Click on the Start button. We'll go to Network. and Let's see what it discovers here. This will take just a moment for it to whir and do its thing. And it's not showing up, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not there. That could be a, a network browser issue, and if we give it enough time, it'll probably show up. But let's just see if we can go there directly by the IP address. So whack whack 192.168.235. Dot one three five. I just happen to know that that's the address. And look at that. There are shares. And you'll notice that I had a, a printer connected to it. I didn't tell you about that before, but you can see it there. Uh, this is the user's home directory. I'm logged on to Windows 7 as user 01, by the way. And there's three files in the user's home directory. Let's go back and take a look at the SMB demo. And there's three files there as well. Just for grins, let's go in and modify the uh, user01 files. So let's, we'll just add a, a file in here. So right click and choose new. And text document. We'll call this home underscore dir underscore file four. Not feeling very creative there, but that'll work. Now let's go back to the Linux box. Let's switch user to user01, su minus user01. And we're already in user01's home directory, so let's take an ls command and see what's there. And look at that. There is the new file that we just created. Now it's interesting, because it was created in a Windows box, you'll notice that it's green compared to the others, which are black. And that's a permissions issue. Let's do ls minus l. And you can see that by default, it gives the owner of the file, in this case user 01, read, write, and execute permission. And you may want that, you may not, uh, but uh, that's, that's the default setting. So some troubleshooting steps just in case you run into them, uh, which seems to be pretty common. I'm not sure why this happens, but often in a classroom we'll miss some of these things. But do the usual network troubleshooting. Make sure the cables are all correct. You know, try a pin command. Then review smb.conf for errors. And just make sure you don't have a typo. Uh, make sure that your Linux and Windows usernames are the same. And this is probably the most common thing I see in the classroom. Also, you want to ensure that the Linux firewall is allowing NetBIOS traffic through. Um, the standard traditional ports are ports 137, 138, and 139, both TCP and UDP. You might need to allow 445, um, and I noticed that uh, if you are running CIFS and you grep on CIFS on your Etsy services file, it shows port 3020 as well. Uh, if you want more information, there's a really good troubleshooting guide at www.samba.org. If you'd like more information in general, as I mentioned, samba.org. Also, soundtraining.net. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. Please like us on Facebook, uh, soundtraining.net slash Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter and Google Plus as well. If you'd like more videos, we have plenty of them, and we're always adding new ones. Try to add at least one a week uh, at our video channel, www.soundtraining.net slash videos. And if you'd like the companion book, 
It is the Accidental Administrator Linux Server Step-by-Step Configuration Guide. It's available through the SoundTraining.net bookstore at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful for you. Thanks for watching. I'm Don Crawley. We'll see you next time.